All right, we're gonna speed run this lecture. We're gonna talk about integrating forms. We're integrating forms over manifolds, hierarchies manifolds. So first, we define a open R K. Need as a K form. Then neta can only be written uniquely as this, and then we define the integral of neta over a to be the scalar function over a. Okay, so this is a scalar function. And then if a is open, then it's a smooth map. Y is uh, alpha a, and omega is a k form of some open set containing the image set y. Then we define the integral of omega over the parametrized manifold y alpha. We define it to be this form. So this form, the integral of this form on a. And we know that these two are linear, so does this integral. Okay? So we have, oh, sorry. We have some theorems about this book. So, first is that the integral is a variant on the reparametrization up to sign. So, basically, if you have two manifolds, it differs only by sign. And here are all the initial definitions. So there's a, the determinant does not change on sign. And blah, 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 blah. There's so many, but let us just use this diagram and then we're going to know everything. And omega, omega is a four. Okay? Okay. Now with this one, we want to show that this is equal to this, right? We want to show this, and then we use definition, we transfer it back to this, right? Where epsilon is equal to plus minus 1, right? Okay, right, so we want to show this, but let's simplify this. So you let neta equal to this one. So this one, you need this, you need this, which is g star of neta. So what we want is to show this, so we make this thing more easier. Right? And neta is a k form, an rk, right? So that you can write it like this. Because this beta, beta is this, this is rk, right? This is rk by definition. So we pull back the k form and rk, which means it can written like this. Okay. Then g star of neta, which is g star of f, and with g star of this. Now theorem 32.2, which is the formula for calculating those, we got it, this is f of g times determinant of dg of those for x ones. So it used to be y one, now now be x ones. Now, so what we have is that the equation then becomes those, right? Because neta is f, right? And like the scalar function in front is those two. Right? We're doing this, but we do only want the scalar function in front. So, it's by this. But this is true by change of variables here, because g is a diffeomorphism. And we know this is true, so we're done. So, this reparameterization only differs by sign. And we have one last thing, which is a formula. Which is a formula, so. Blah, 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 so if omega is some FTZI, K form, represented at Rn, I get Y, then the integral, right, so the K form and Rn, then this is like, equal to this, and our proof is, one line. We know that this, right? We have this, then alpha star of this, which is this, and alpha star of this. But this is basically this by theorem 32.2. Okay? So we have finished everything for this lecture. It's really quick. And now there's like a remarks that is, seems very interesting. It makes sense of the dx notation commonly used in single variable calculus. 
So this is a one form, the integral of theta, which becomes this. And this is basically this for a equal to ab. So write it like the notation in si uh, single variable calculus. And those are the line integrals. Here is like a dx dy notation. So in calculus, we usually do this. The symbol has no independent meaning, right? Um, so we have this is equal to this by Fubini's theorem. And we also have this, right? And then we switch those. We we'll switch those two, right? It becomes dy dx. So we have this. But this is negative of f of dx dy, right? Because we uh, this is like it depends on the sign of the determinant of the diffeomorphism. So this is like a ambiguity. It pre it creates ambiguity for for this n notation, right? So yeah, we just conclude this lecture. I'm so tired. Go sleep. Bye.